In this video, I'll be doing six symbolization questions from multiplace predicate logic that featured on a previous test. This is really nice practice if you're already quite comfortable with the symbolizations, uh, but they do get more difficult as we go along. We'll also demonstrate a variety of skills here, including paraphrasing and so on, that are nice uh, ways to simplify complicated questions. Jimmy cannot come to Diane's cottage unless he, Jim, who is Jimmy, hires at least two cooks. Uh, so uh, whenever you see something like this, Diane's cottage, uh, this is some sort of reference to a combination of operations. Uh, so we can quickly just replace that. So the cottage of Diane, so that's just F of D. Uh, Jimmy is just A, so wherever you see Jimmy, that's just A, uh, at least two cooks, so cannot come to Diane's cottage. Okay, so um, this unless we know is going to be some sort of or, and because I'm using name letters, it actually means that I don't really need to introduce any subjects with quantifiers until I get to the uh, two cooks business. So let's just go for Jimmy cannot come to uh, Diane's cottage. So uh, here's can come to. So it's not the case that Jimmy can come to Diane's cottage, which we already figured out is F of D. Okay, so that's the first part. Then we have the unless. Again, you can do the unless, the uh, if not one, then the other way. But we're perfectly happy with the or, I'm sure, at this point in the course. So now it says, unless Jimmy hires at least two cooks. So there's the hires relation, there's a cook. So how do you hire at least two cooks? Well, there is a cook, uh, D, and Jimmy hires that thing. And we say there is a cook, Y, and Jimmy hires that thing. And X doesn't equal Y. Close a bunch of brackets, and that's it. So uh, the trick here to this last symbolization is I just, you know, move progressively and I state the things. To hire at least two cooks means he hires this cook, he hires this cook, and the first cook isn't the second, which means they're different, which generates two. Why is it at least? Because I'm not stating that there is no other. Uh, you can, if you want, rip out your quantifiers here, dot, 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 and then you can write the internal sequence in any order. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is one of the rare cases where it works just fine. I would just strongly encourage you to always think, though, that whenever you have something like x doesn't equal y, you need to make sure that the x and the y are under the scopes of the things that matter. If they're not under the scopes, um, x doesn't equal y is meaningless. Uh, okay, so the only real sort of variant on this is to change the unless to if not one, then the other, uh, and that's that. Okay, question two. Movies that have a celebrity in it are popular. Note this sentence is ambiguous. Symbolize it such that a celebrity is a specific or particular celebrity. So you should know what this means. The reference to ambiguity is about quantifier order. So you should see that movies that have a celebrity in it are popular. So a celebrity, this is an existential celebrity, um, and then they're popular, that's no big deal. But when I say movies that have a celebrity in it, I mean all movies. So any, every movie that has a celebrity in it are popular. Uh, okay, so normally, if I was to symbolize this left to right, it would actually be the all movies uh, that have a celebrity in it are popular, but that's gonna turn out to be incorrect because the order of the quantifiers would mean that there's just a generic celebrity. But if I wanna symbolize it such that the celebrity is a specific or particular celebrity, the only thing you need to remember is that means the existential needs to come before the universal. Everything else is canonical form and there's no problems. So first I'm going to say there is a celebrity. Notice that this invokes a specific celebrity. And for every single movie, uh, why? If you're a movie, uh, movies that have the celebrity in it are popular um, and you have the celebrity in it, uh, so why the movie has the celebrity in them, uh, then you're popular, or it is popular. So what is it in this case? Uh, it's the movie. Uh, notice that the existential X runs over the entire scope here, um, otherwise it doesn't really make sense. So there is a celebrity, and for any movie that the celebrity is in, then it's popular. That's how we do the ambiguous case. We just need to pay attention to quantifier order. This one doesn't have me write out an English sentence to clarify because it already clarifies it for me. 
Question three. No student likes exams unless they are easy. Um, so whenever you have something like this, uh, again, because there's the negations, there's the unless, there's the, you know, there's some sort of strange things, um, I just strongly suggest that you paraphrase. The paraphrase that I see most naturally here is uh, every student or all student, all students, um, don't like exams unless they're easy. So that seems to sort of be natural for me. So the no doesn't really modify the student for me. It just naturally modifies the not liking. So I would now say um, for everything, if you're a student, then it's not the case. Uh, well, actually, instead of saying it's not the case, let's just go for it then. For everything that an, is an exam, uh, then now we can say the natural uh, relationship that don't like. It's not the case that X likes these exams uh, unless they are easy. And here I make sure that it's the exam that's easy. Okay, so that's how we would sort of do it. A simple paraphrase makes this really nice. Now you can immediately see that there's lots of tricks that we can do here. I could uh, undemorgans this, as it were, and then un uh, sort of move this negation out uh, using negation as its junction and stuff like that. And then I could sort of quantify or negate this thing. But really what that amounts to is the following. So I could say it's not the case that there is an exam that is liked and isn't easy. Um, and then this you could do again. Uh, so you would say it's not the case that there is a student that's such and such and such. Uh, so yeah, so that's how you would sort of get the other forms, but I find the paraphrasing really the best here. Question four. Descendants is the best pizza joint in Toronto, even though it's expensive. So even if you don't know what Descendants is, uh, which you should, it's amazing, uh, there is this uh, sort of um, clue right there. It's not so much a clue, it just tells you. Descendants is just a name. So here, Descendants is just a uh, little d, and Toronto is little a. Uh, even though it's expensive, that's fine. So we have this comma even though. Comma even though is just like comma but. It just means and. So really, what, at the bare minimum, your sentence has to have in it that descendants is expensive. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to, I'm just going to start with that immediately. So I'll just say descendants is expensive and. So that captures the even though. Now I can do the superlative. Remember, superlative is when I compare an individual thing to everything else in some sort of well ordering. So it's the best piece of joint in Toronto. And the way that I always recommend to do superlative is to first state the things we know. So if I say Descendants is the best pizza joint in Toronto, then the first thing I know is Descendants is a pizza joint, DD, and it is in Toronto, uh, so is in there, so D is in A. Notice the brackets here, no brackets around single place predicates, brackets around multiplace. And now I can say the relational component. Descendants is the best pizza joint in Toronto means and for everything that is a pizza joint and is in Toronto and uh, X isn't descendants, then descendants is better than them. DX. That's a superlative, no problem. You just need to remember always to include this X doesn't equal D because otherwise you would get the contradiction that descendants is somehow better than themselves. Okay. Question four. Five. Whoa. Matt, who is Ben's dentist, doesn't like every book that he's ever read. Immediately, you should spot the non-restrictive clause, the comma who. Uh, so this just says Matt is Ben's dentist. Ben's dentist, that's an operation, the dentist of, oh, there it is, Ben. So this is the dentist of Ben. Matt is just uh, A. So to say Matt is Ben's dentist, remember the word is when we're relating individuals, it's just in the quality. So this just says A equals D of B. 
Uh, so that's how we do the non-restrictive clause, and you must include the conjunction. The conjunction is now the main connective, so I'm just going to open a big bracket. The rest of the sentence is there. Again, remember, do not do this, okay? That's a mistake, so make sure you don't put brackets around uh, your um, equalities. Okay, so now I just need to symbolize the rest, which is Matt doesn't like every book uh, that he's ever read. So... I sort of regret this question um, because it hinges on you knowing what the word every means. So remember, we've talked about this in class. There's a difference between any and every. If I don't like every book that he's ever read, that's different than saying I don't like any book that I've ever read. Um, these are like annoying English stipulations. Anyway, the way to sort of uh, interpret this is if I don't like every book that he's ever read, the most natural way to interpret that is just to say there is a book that Matt has read that he doesn't like. Because um, that's what it means to say I don't like every book I've ever read. I've li I'm, I might have uh, liked some, but I certainly didn't like them all. So uh, the way I would do this is I would just say there is something that is a book, and it also has some other property um, that, I, that, I ha that Matt has read. Now, so here, notice the red relationship is a bit complicated. It's M3. So 1 reads 2 at 3. So if I analyze M3, it will have to say, uh, who's doing the reading? Well, that part is Matt. Reading what? Oh, the book. That's X. At what? Well, that has to be a Y. And this Y here has to link to uh, the time predicate because it's at a particular time. So what I need to do is introduce uh, y, and I need to pin it to f y. But to pin down this predicate, I just always need to ask, Am I, is he reading it at all times or at some times? Well, if he's ever read it, it doesn't mean he's reading it at every time. It means he's just there is some time. So going back here, I can say there is a book, and there is a time that um, well, that. And then now I say, uh, Matt has read this book. And what's so special about this book? Well, if Matt doesn't like every book that he's ever read, it means there is a book and there is a time that Matt read this and Matt didn't like it or doesn't like it. So it's not the case that Matt likes the book. X. Oh, a lot of brackets. Okay, so again, uh, I demonstrated two, two things here. There's a paraphrase going on to make it so it's really clear what I mean by it doesn't like every book. Um, and then I used the inside out method here to understand that the Y predicate had to be pinned to EYFY. And of course, then I introduced uh, my subjects before I actually put it into a multi-place relation. Uh, the other thing here is there's this sort of trivial uh, non-restrictive clause. Now, the universal form is fine. You could have said uh, it's not the case that for every single book, um, if you're a book, then... Um, uh, actually, instead of then, I'll say, and there is a time that um, Matt has read you, uh, then Matt likes the book. That's also perfectly fine. Some people might have seen this more naturally. Um, but uh, for some reason, I just see the first version. So I'm going to point something out. You guys might be worried about this. I don't know why I did that. I'll highlight. You might be worried about this thing here. Does this say that there's just one specific time? No, because remember from our uh, knowledge of quantifiers, this is uh, all books. There is some generic time related to the book that is being read. So this is pretty nice. Uh, our knowledge of quantifiers makes this uh, understanding very clear. So this is a pretty nice question. Let's give it a shot. So I got the although in the middle. So Tim only likes his children. So what does that mean? Does that mean if you're a child of Tim, then Tim likes you? Or does that mean if Tim likes you, then you're actually a child of Tim? Uh, well, you know, at this point, we're pretty comfortable with the award only. It's not really worth trying to, like, flip uh, consequence and antecedents around anymore, you should have strong understanding of it. So here, it seems like the, the main group here is the things that Tim likes. And then the main property is that if Tim likes it, it's got to be the children. So symbolizing this uh, is actually pretty straightforward. You say, for anything, if Tim likes 
oops, uh, wrong way, right? If Tim likes it, then it has to be, uh, X has to be the child of Tim. That's it. So, Tim only likes his children means if Tim likes it, it has to be a child of Tim. Now, some people will say, see this as the counter, um, the contrapositive form. So, if you're not a child of Tim, then Jim, Tim doesn't like it, or you, or whatever. Um, and you can even see this in some other way. It's not the case that there is something that it is um, liked by Tim and not a child of Tim. So there's lots of ways to sort of see this. It's just really understanding the meaning. You just paraphrase it out in any way you want. Okay, let's look at the right side here. Only Tim likes his children. Um, so here, the property and the group it, it should also sort of be clear from your understanding of only. Only Tim likes his children means for anything that likes Tim's children, then that thing must be Tim. So we'll say for anything, uh, if... Uh, well, I guess the first thing we'd have to say is um, for all children of Tim. So we'll say for anything... If you're a child of Tim, and, uh, actually instead of and, I think it's more natural to say arrow, then introduce a new group, I'll say for anything that likes these children of Tim, then we would say um, x equals a, sorry, no, not x, uh, y, y, the likers equal a. Okay, so only Tim likes his children means for all the ch children of Tim, then for all the people that like the children of Tim, then those people must be Tim. So I'm missing a bracket, I believe. And that's it.